Hello and welcome to Transformations, the closing concert of the Minnesota Philharmonic Orchestra's virtual season. My name is Brian Dowdy. I'm the artistic director and principal conductor of the MPO. Throughout this season, we've explored the courage it takes to create art in the midst of a global pandemic. We've celebrated the myriad of styles and diversity of voices that make our musical world such a vibrant and powerful example of what the world out there can become. And we've walked a musical path from grief and uncertainty to gratitude and hope. Today's program embodies the wonder, adventure, and healing power of nature in the music of William Grant Still, Amy Beach, and Jonathan Russell, and the transformative power of play in pieces by Missy Mazzoli, Paul Bonneau, and Saba Aminikia. It has been truly awesome to feature so many living composers this season, including Dushan Bogdanovich, Ryan Brown, Anthony R. Green, and Jonathan Russell, Missy Mazzoli, Libby Larson, Eric Erwazen, Claude Bowling, and Paul Bonneau. And we are ridiculously excited to close tonight's concert and our season with the world premiere of House of Circus by Saba Aminikia. Today's concert is also something of a tour of the instrumental families of the orchestra. We begin with the winds and brass, who in classical music often embody or signify nature. They are also the instruments that are most likely to cross over from a symphony orchestra, to a small jazz ensemble, to a circus band or a New Orleans brass band. Here's principal bassoonist Brian Hadley to introduce you to three very different pieces by William Grant Still, Paul Bonneau, and Amy Beach. Hi, my name is Brian Hadley, and I've enjoyed being a member of the MPO for 20 some years now. It was so rewarding and emotional to be able to get together as a wind quintet, even for such a short time, so we could bring you two short works that celebrate nature in such different ways. The familiar American cowboy song, I Ride in Old Paint, has been used by many composers, but I like the way that William Grant Still puts an almost bluesy spin on his tune. It was very satisfying to play this arrangement for wind quintet that mixes in so many color combinations in such a short amount of time. Thank you. 
Paul Bonneau wrote his Caprice and Form de Valse in 1950 for saxophone. I uh, happened to also uh, study saxophone as well as bassoon in college, and I played this particular piece and thought it was just a blast. I thought it was so characteristically French with the raw, raw, raw and all this stuff going on. It's almost uh, playing instruments with a French accent. And uh, I enjoyed it so much, I thought I'd play it on bassoon. Um, and so I hope you enjoy uh, Paul Bonneau's uh, Caprice and Form de Valse played on the bassoon.
To me, Amy Beach's pastoral reminds me of childhood walks to Lake Harriet in the summer, picking dandelions, smelling lilacs and freshly mowed grass, as well as complaining of tired legs and excitement of getting an ice cream treat once we made it to the beach. I hope you enjoy our performance. The next two pieces on the program feature stringed instruments. Because these instruments don't use breath to produce sound, they can play long stretches of uninterrupted virtuosic passage work or endlessly sustained lines and harmonies. Here are two such works by Missy Mazzoli and Jonathan Russell, introduced by concertmaster Catherine Himmerick and composer Jonathan Russell. I'm going to be playing a piece called Kinski Paganini, written by Missy Mazzoli in 2016. Paganini, of course, is the composer who gave violinists some of our most challenging repertoire, and this piece depicts Paganini as a maniacal composer. Whereas many pieces for solo violin are inspired by Bach and as such have a sort of divine underpinning, this piece is not, and it's really quite diabolical. I've been an admirer of Missy Mazzoli for a long time, and I'm excited to be able to play this piece for you. It's so much fun to play, although it may be somewhat disturbing to listen to.
Hi, my name is Jonathan Russell, and I'm the composer of In the Fir Trees, Fireflies for a String Quartet. So I want to tell you a little bit about um, this piece, how I came to write it, and um, how I think about it, what it means to me. Uh, the piece was originally one movement of this large 45-minute work called Night Songs, which was a setting of poetry by the Spanish poet Federico Garcia Lorca. Um, so that, it was kind of a it's hard to say exactly what it was. It, it alternated um, songs with purely purely instrumental pieces, which I thought of as kind of commentary on the songs. So this piece came after a song based on a poem, and the last line of that poem was, In the fir trees on the mountains, fireflies. And I just thought that was a very evocative image, picturing these you know little twinkling lights um, from the fireflies on the mountainside. So, uh, so the the piece was inspired by that image, and um, basically, it's it's a in a way, it's a very simple piece. It's just this kind of outward expanding wedge of chords. So the instruments start close together, and then as it goes, they ex <laughs> I'm having trouble showing this. As it goes, they move farther apart, and then they start again. And each phrase gets progressively longer, and they move the chords get progressively um, wider as it goes along. Um, until it reaches kind of this climax where they're all um, in octaves, really far apart from each other. And then the beginning um, sort of happens again in a compressed form. Um, it's, it's pretty similar formally to um, the Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. Um, I almost think of it as, as like, as if Philip Glass had written um, the Adagio, Barber's Adagio for Strings, maybe it would sound like this. Um, it definitely has that kind of minimalist quality. It's very simple, very um, possibly austere, but I think there's actually a lot of um, emotional heart to it as well. Um, just a little bit more about the history of the piece. So it was premiered um, in 2007, I believe, um, as part of this 45-minute work. And then later it was used by some choreographers in San Francisco who I've worked with many times, um, Janice Garrett and Charles Moulton, in one of their productions. So it was one dance number with a live ensemble amongst many. And what was really neat about that is that that kind of put a whole new um, spin on it. It was really interesting for me to see what, what these choreographers found in the music and what they did with it. So in any case, um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
for the final performance of our concert and our season. We bring the winds, brass, strings, and percussion together for the world premiere of House of Circus by Saba Aminikia. We are so grateful to partner with Saba in the creation of this new work and to feature the incredible circus heroes, students of the Sirkana Social Circus School in Turkey. Young artists that embody the healing and transformative power of play.
Thank you for being with us today and throughout this season. Thank you for giving us the chance to make something beautiful in the face of an impossible year. For helping us to make our musical world more vibrant and our communities stronger. Join us for our return to the live concert stage, September 5th at the Lake Harriet Bandshell. We can't wait to see you there.